This is a podcast from The Bugle. The first time I see your eyes, everything else disappears. We stare at each other in silence as I try to find the words to capture what I'm feeling. An eternity passes, long enough for a thousand honeymoons. At last, I find my voice and say, What are you doing in my vent? <laughs> you scurry away like a rat. The police find no trace of you. Weeks go by and every time I hear a sound in the night, a bump or a scrape in the walls, I think they're in the walls now or maybe I should burn this place to the ground. The police find no trace of you. I begin to know when you're there, even before I see or hear or smell you. Once I manage to scald you with a full pot of hot pasta by accident and you disappear for weeks, I lure you back with piles of old newspaper. The police find no trace of you. Finally, desperate and waiting for a fresh pot of pasta to boil, I ask, why are you doing this? What even is this? From under the sink you speak for the first time. This is The Gargle, the sonic glossy (laughs) magazine to the Beagle's audio newspaper for visual world. Hello, I'm your host, Alice Fraser. Your guest editors for this week's edition of the magazine are Alison Spittle and Lauren Patterson. Welcome. (laughs) That gave me flashbacks. I used to have rats in the walls where I lived and uh, that very much transported me back. (laughs) Did you? I, I, yeah. I, I'm a f- yeah, I've, I've had like a lot of vermin in my life too. And it's like, uh, you know, you, you sometimes you just want to pretend you're Snow White. And I wonder if Snow White, when she sang to these animals, was just in denial about how effed up her uh, vermin problem was, you know? I think yeah. it was just the curse that her screams came out so melodious. <laughs> yeah, it was a cry for help, just generally. <laughs> Well, before we take hands and walk down the red carpet that is this week's top stories, let's have a look at the front page. Front page of this week's magazine is the Met Galar, which is a large crested bird with a taste for fashion dressed as Billie Eilish. The theme this year was Karl Lagerfeld and everyone dressed in a way that they hoped would go viral, which is not the same as fashion, but close enough. Did you have a favourite garb, garment? Um, I didn't pay much attention like um, this week, but I do know that Barry Keoghan, who is an Irish actor who was nominated for an Oscar this year, he went in a like a very large bl- uh, blue tartan Burberry suit. And to be honest with you, I just support him in every endeavour he does. So he could go around wearing like, um, you know, the skin of my family. And I still would be like, oh, go you, Barry. Go Ireland. You know? You're doing great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Lauren, are you a fashion uh, follower? Uh, Pedro Pascal. I saw his outfit. This, and he had like the sort of tartan, almost like a, was it a kilt? I'm sure he had some kind of like skirt. It might not have been a kilt. And then like a red like shirt. And I was like, yes, I like a man in a skirt. Don't know why. I think it's very bold and I like it. <laughs> bold I feel like a it's a man idea. who's either very secure in his masculinity or has discarded it entirely, either of which option that I'm okay with. <laughs> yeah. I feel like more men need to embrace it. You know, like skipping as well. Like skipping the scene is so girly and childish. But when you do it, it's great. And I feel the same about skirts. They're so f- You can twirl in them, do a little spin. I feel like the world would be a happier place if we all just wore skirts and skipped. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go back to better days, you know? Yeah. To when we were eight. <laughs> to when we were eight. Lunchables for all. Lunchables yeah. for all. <laughs> I think you've got it. You have to. Uh, I mean, that you're sort of importing a happiness situation because there is nothing sadder than somebody crying while skipping in a skirt. That's true. That is true. Very true. <laughs> uh, the satirical cartoon this week it was submitted by James Nokise and is a picture of a cockroach which made its way up the steps of the Met Gala to much acclaim. And the tag is Karl Lagerfeld makes it to the show. I... It's a joke about how <laughs> awful Karl Lagerfeld was in life. I think my favourite set of outfits were all the people who just showed up while being fat, which he hated. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were making some sort of like joke about like he's reincarnated as a cockroach, and I was like, yeah, that seems fair. Oh yeah, like... I mean that that was that was the joke. <laughs> oh, for f- sake! Sorry, yeah. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I was sitting there thinking, am I stupid? Because I, I also thought that was the joke. Uh, no, no, tis me, tis me. I'm the problem, it's me. It's fine, you know. uh, You're not the problem. Karl Lagerfeld thought you were the problem. He did, not. he did. What a, what a silly goose. 
What a terrible uh, person. <laughs> he had a diet book out. Did you know that? I did not know that. Did but he? I, I, I'm always confused by the people who think that fashion is not for human bodies to wear. Um, oh, totally. He he would recommend smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did take that on, but like none of the other dietary advice. It's going great. <laughs> Dickberg news now. This is the news of ice stick news. I don't know whether to call it Dickberg or ice stick. Or an iceberg that looks like a dick. This is the story <laughs> <laughs> of a, a of a suggestively shaped iceberg, uh, which was found or discovered or noticed off the coast of Newfoundland. I, this I'm always worried about things that were already there that are discovered because it just feels like you just didn't find it until now, rather than it being a new discovery. Yes, uh, people are quite excited about it. Really, I think. I think one of my favorite bits about this story is that like the town that it was found off the name of it is Dildo, <laughs> which feels like the ultimate like uh, I did think that this was fake because of the because of the coincidences of the town being called Dildo. I'm nearly sure. It, let me absolutely check it was called Dildo because now the cockroach thing has made me like uh, doubt everything about me <laughs> at the moment. Um, but like yeah, from the town of Dildo, yeah. It, it, and that if, if for the listeners at home, when when Alice said suggestive, it's it's actually nearly like uh, it should be pixelated. I think, like, <laughs> I think it's <laughs> I think it's wrong. It has it has a shaft. It has a vein. Yeah. It has two 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 testes, or or is testes <laughs> noticed a in an area of the province known as Conception Bay. Exactly. This is when I started to think it was a prank. I was like, "Am I am I an idiot here?" There's a dick-shaped iceberg in the town called Dildo in Conception Bay. I was not born yesterday. And then I googled it, and it's real. And I was like, "Okay, fair enough." <laughs> but why is why is the town called Dildo? Like, what's the? I'd love to know the the backstory to that town. Well, I feel like we got sent this a lot by our roving reporters, and I don't think the iceberg knows it's shaped like a dick. Like, it's not doing it on purpose. It's like that Austrian village called Fucking, and don't you dare bleep that ped. It's a place name, not a swear word. Getting offended is cultural imperialism, and I won't have it. But, you know, like, it, it, it has no sense of penises. It's an iceberg. Plenty of people probably have noses or faces shaped like some sort of insect vagina, and we don't know. Mm. Mm. That's That's so true. Um... Yeah, okay. Well, maybe... So So we're okay with this big dick-shaped iceberg? Is that the vibe? Because I feel like clutching my pearls every time I see it. I feel like we're imposing dick on the iceberg. The iceberg is just iceberg. Yeah, okay. I mean, to be fair, this is the iceberg when it's cold. Imagine how big it would be at room temperature. This is the biggest <laughs> argument against climate change. Also, I was thinking about this, like, dick iceberg. Um... You know, it's around it's around the Bay of Conception, and uh, there is going to be a, a vagina-shaped cruise liner uh, that's going to the Bay of uh, Conception. But thankfully, it's unsinkable, so it should be fine. <laughs> Imagine if this had been around at the time of the Titanic. By now, we'd be having uh, iceberg ship crossbreeds. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> It did give me the idea, though, that if I was a time traveller, I've always wondered what I would do. And now after this, I was like, I would just go back to when places were named and give them all ridiculous names. So mm. names at the time where you wouldn't know that it was anything inappropriate. But then fast forward a few hundred years and, oh, you're living in um, Vibrating Rabbit. The little town of Vibrating Rabbit. Or you're living in um, Old Kinkyville. Like, I would Old absolutely... Kinkyville. Old Kinkyville. <laughs> or I'd love, like, I'd, when you do name that town, you can make yourself mayor in a couple of years. Like, you'd be like, yes. call a place like Shit Town, USA. I'm, yeah. I'm the mayor of Shit Town, USA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tell you what, you can just say you're the mayor of Shit Town, USA, and nobody will check. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting an arts degree. There's no debarts or whatever for shit where they just look through and they're like, these are the shittiest people. <laughs> I wonder if there is like a, a vagina liner or a vagina iceberg that is like floating towards it. What happens if they meet? What happens if they meet? Are there going to just be loads of little baby bugs? They're just going to fight in Ikea. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what they did. <laughs> they heterosexuals. I hope all the carnival cruisers with the hen's nights steer clear of this because I don't think those ladies would be able to cope. The hen's night industry would just collapse. Alice, I, I, you know what? I hope, I, hope they're, I hope they get done by it. I hope they... <laughs> The iceberg hits them in a head party. He's like, this is what we wanted, but we don't want it this way. And it's like, yeah. they're just watching their nan get swept out. Like, no, just, dick, no. I just never understand the endless appetite for novelty penis paraphernalia in Hen's Nights. Yeah. Have you ever eaten the penis pasta? No, I, I never have. But like, the pre- it's the premise that you haven't seen a penis because then how would they know what... I don't understand why it's so many penises. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like uh I don't know like, Is it like I'm... fertility rituals. I don't know. Do they take all the like plastic penis straws and burn them in a big bonfire? I don't <laughs> Yeah, and the bride has to like drink it like a cocktail of yeah. microplastics inside it. If you could change one sort of like wonder of the world to be more phallic shaped. All which the ones you think the would be the best shaped. one. Even the pyramids, especially the pyramids. I don't ask me um... why I know that. Re- <laughs> Mm. Ancient Egyptians had, I'm suggesting, ancient Egyptians had a very strange version of circumcision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like know, what Big Ben. Do, like, Big Ben. Big Ben. Big Ben. It's already got the kind of right name. Oh, that's just Big Ben. And then the, the, it can just chime like that. And it's well, like a much? Pokemon. <laughs> it just says dong, dong, dong all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for your ads, your ad section now, because you can't be what you can't buy. And this ad is brought to you by you, or it could be, because our ad section is now for sale. Not all of it, just a bit. You can buy ad space on the gargle. Write to us at hellobuglers at thebuglepodcast.com and sell your soul to us for money. (laughs) And by soul, I mean product. You loved breast milk, but you're an adult now and it would be weird if you still had it, like a toy train or hope. Be a grown-up and try alternative milks, like nut milk or udder milk, which is breast milk from an alternate universe where your mother was a cow or a cashew. (laughs) And why is ham so expensive? How are you supposed to afford that scone? Cost of living increases are affecting us all, but now there's a way to make being alive affordable again by going green, literally, at... Give us your blood and we'll replace your blood with chlorophyll.com. <laughs> Give us your blood and we'll replace your blood with chlorophyll so you can photosynthesize. No more groceries, no more grocery bills. We get to keep your blood. <laughs> what are you going to do with their blood? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't write the ads. I just read them out of my brain. <laughs> You've marveled at the dick-shaped iceberg. Now taste it with half a glass of water. Half a glass of water, approximately 0.00069566689% of a dick-shaped iceberg. 100% of the flavour. <laughs> now it's time for sculpture news. And this is the news that the principal, who was forced to resign over showing a picture of Michelangelo's David, uh, has now visited Michelangelo's David in, which is either, in, in what is either a triumphant victory tour or a sad defeat tour uh alison spittle you've met a man called david can you unpack this story for us yes so this is a story about a teacher in uh florida that um got the sack for showing these children who are 11 to 12 years old um uh michelangelo's master uh piece uh david Hope Carasquilla and her family went to see Michelangelo's David on Friday at Florence's Academia Galleria. And they came at the invitation of the museum director, uh, Cecile Holberg, who said that she was grateful for the visit, right? And, um, the, you know, this teacher said, I think it's beautiful, it looks like a church. She was talking about the area. And um, the educator was asked to resign from Tallahassee Classical School in Florida last month after less than a year in the job. Local media reported that Miss Carasquilla did not know the reason why she was asked to leave, but believed it was related to complaints over the lesson that she did about Michelangelo's David. Um, so I think one parent complained that, that the Renaissance era material was pornographic and others said they wanted to know about the lesson before it was taught. So I think like 11 or 12 year olds, they have access to smartphones. Um, if my first view of a penis when I have a smartphone as a child is David, I think you're doing quite well. David is the stabilizers 
of the dick community for a lot of people. Like it's there, you know, <laughs> if you don't have a penis yourself, it's probably David, or it might have been your dad when he got out of the bath once. Do you know what I mean? And you never speak about it ever again. <laughs> but like, uh, so it's either Dad Dick or David Dick that you see forever when you're a child. And uh, I, 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 I think it's sad that this person's uh, been given the sack. I think um, people think very strong. People want to protect their children um, so strongly from the idea of sex that they'll protect them from art. When I was a kid, I was five years old. My teacher did a sex education class involving the classroom rabbit. And I remember it uh, because I was just so curious about like the world and like how babies were made. And she explained it by saying that the rabbit put a stick into a little pouch of another, of the female rabbit. And then a little egg would be made into a baby. I mean, maybe it wasn't the best lesson. That's not bio, you know, <laughs> biologically the best. But like I didn't feel damaged from it in any way. But I remember talking to my mum about it. Uh, like a few years down the line she said there was a massive there was a massive complaints in my school and like uh, uh, parents were very angry that the teacher had even broached the subject and it's like well, what do you want your kids to do at school they're supposed to learn so that's why I kind of I wish I was funnier about it but I just <laughs> felt quite sorry for her she seemed like a good teacher learn I know I find it baffling because I think of the amount of art galleries I've either been forced to go to on a school trip or you know when you find yourself as a comedian in a different city and you think what can I do that's free and warm as you head to an art gallery (laughs) I must have seen so many titties and willies so many and I've never looked at like a renaissance painting and thought actually that's quite hot I'm gonna go have to take myself off and have a little a little d- sort of debrief. Like, I've never <laughs> felt... So if these parents genuinely think that, a, like, not even seeing it in the real, but just seeing a picture of Michelangelo's David is going to be enough to, like, turn their children into these, like, sex-ravaged beings or whatever. Like, that must have been their concern, that it was going to do something, like, overstimulate them or something. I think it's baffling. It just feels like upside down world to me because surely the yeah. whole point of art galleries is for people to drag you around going, look at it, look at it, it'll be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> also, David's not that, like, he's a normal, the, the, the penis size is, like, of a normal, it's not, it's not like he's going full hog down there or anything like that. It's yeah. just a normal penis, you know, Although made out of marble. I did look it up very detailed and that all I could think was because obviously it took him a long time to like sculpt that didn't he yeah I wonder what percentage of the time like is that a bit that he was like right I kind of don't want to spend too much time sculpting this penis like a bit weird to just be sculpting penis all day or was that something he was like no I'm gonna get this bit bang this is gonna be the focal point the art like how much time was devoted to to the sculpting of the actual penis that's what I want to know oh I'd say loads I'd yeah. say loads. <laughs> you know? I'd say absolutely loads. <laughs> no, I feel like it's one of those things that you kind of rough it out from the heart. I think because, it, it, you know, if, if it's not perfect, you're like, that's the personality, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that's how you... character. <laughs> You've got a character actor's penis, you know? <laughs> Your penis is like Steve Buscemi. Wasn't it Michelangelo who very famously, when asked how he made his sculptures, it just said, everything that isn't penis I take away? <laughs> yeah i believe that's true <laughs> i want that on a t-shirt that needs to be like motivational merchandise <laughs> and now it's time for your reviews as you know each week we ask our guest editors to bring in something to review out of five stars i understand Alison, that you've got a show and tell for this week's review oh alice it's more of a it's more of a just Hear the excitement in my voice. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna play you this, <laughs> and you have to guess. You have to guess uh, what I was seeing. Oh, oh, holy moly! Wow. <laughs> well, there was a toot toot there. Oh. It's a steam train, baby. <laughs> You're a king. Pure power. <laughs> Making my steam dreams come true. <laughs> Oh wow! Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes! <laughs> I saw a steam train. I I I was confronted with a steam train at Mahlanla Festival. Well, just outside it, and I had to do a gig in a train shed, 
but I was allowed to ride on the steam train both in the front bit where all the coal and the fire is and then where in where the seats are and uh, it was the greatest experience of my life I started making noises I never thought were possible <laughs> like holy guacamole and stuff which is something I never say normally but um, it was incredible because the steam train have you, has, have you ever been on a steam train guys? No, yeah. but I would love to. Oh, well, the the best thing is when it, when they pull the brakes on it and, you know, it stopped. The the train itself... <laughs> uh... Sorry. No, I no, 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 no. of that sentence, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, the train, the train kind of... Because it's chugging along so much and the fire is still going, um, it kind of pants like a dog because it's been going for so long. And 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 it kind of, when it calms down, it makes these massive noises like, <sighs> <sighs> and I just love that from machinery. And there's something inside <laughs> me that really wants to be chased by a steam train, because like, I think I could outrun it. And if I couldn't, I just like run to the side. I'd be fine. You know, that's how I feel about steam trains. I love them. I love them. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be around more steam trains in my life. I've decided. Like it's like swimming with a dolphin for me. Uh, except, uh, <laughs> you know, except the train isn't sentient and in pain while I'm just waving along <laughs> with this like, dolphin. <laughs> five out of five. Uh, so five out of five for the steam train. Choo choo. Um, and Lauren, have you brought in anything for us this week? Yes, I'm giving five stars to falling asleep with the dog. Ooh. I think it is perfect. I hate falling asleep on the sofa because I feel guilty I feel like I've you know wasted an hour of my life or whatever I feel like I'm not being a good adult because I'm like I've fallen asleep on the sofa like that's really that's really bad falling asleep with the dog on the sofa bonding experience comforting uh extra warmth in a cost of living crisis yes please (laughs) I fell asleep on the sofa with the dog last night and when I woke up it was just the most content I think I've ever felt in a long time because I just woke up spooning this like essential real life teddy bear he was happy because he just had some great bonding time some serotonin I didn't feel guilty because I was like I'm actually enriching my dog's life right here five stars falling asleep with the dog no guilt no guilt just pure bonding I love it and does your dog like does your dog snore or anything like what kind oh of bed my partner goodness so he does snow but apparently the other night I didn't hear this because I was spark out as well my boyfriend apparently lay awake listening to the dog snore so loudly that he thought the dog was in the bed he was prepared uh, prepared to wake me up and be like I've told you Lauren the dog can't come in the bed the dog was in his bed on the other side of the room but just absolute for, for a dog so small he has got some big boy snores in him he loves it but I like it when he snores because I'm like well he's obviously comfy and happy and he's dreaming of dog things i don't know what he dreams of probably a better life no what <laughs> <laughs> when, when i snore people are like do you have a medical problem because yeah. i snore and i like cut off very quick and they're like she's not breathing <laughs> she's not breathing so i like to sleep where and, and make everybody fear that's my yeah. <laughs> like a newborn baby that's how you know you love them yeah, that's you spend it. your yeah. first three weeks in absolute terror that they're about to die. So, Alison, maybe this is just a sign that you're very loved. I am. I am. And now it's time for our third penis-related story of the week. It's been a very penis-heavy, uh, very penis-heavy set of stories that have been sent in by our roving gargle reporters. I don't, I don't uh, find them, but people do send them to me. This is the story that a Dutch court on Friday ordered a man uh, to stop jizzing. Well, specifically <laughs> to stop donating his sperm. He had allegedly fathered between 500 and 600 children. Real sort of Attila the Hun vibe there. And he's been ordered by a court to not donate any more semen to clinics. We're full! Uh, as, as we say in Australia, <laughs> f- off, we're full. Um, <laughs> so he's going to have to do the rest of it uh, manually or penisually. Oh, I my think. God. Oh, my God. Has anyone told this man that, like, he can get free pornography on the internet? He doesn't have to go <laughs> to a clinic. He can, like, <laughs> he can wank on his own time. He doesn't even need pornography. Like, you know, the imagination is fine. <laughs> He must be really into clinics. He must be really into waiting rooms, into yes. the admin. That must be foreplay for him, you know? 
Well, I mean, this is not his first uh, infraction, if you can call it that, because in 2017 he was banned from donating to Dutch fertility clinics where he'd already fathered over 100 children and then he continued to donate abroad, including uh, to Danish sperm banks and other countries. So he's an international criminal... He's Jesus. spreading that seed all over. I do think there's maybe a conspiracy going on, though. Because yeah. I don't know if you saw, but they've asked him to write to the clinics abroad to destroy the samples they've got. I'm thinking, is his um, seed just too powerful? Like, do they know something we don't? And are they like, no, we must destroy all evidence. This man cannot breed. It will, be, it will create, like, too powerful an offspring. The world is not ready. Get rid of all his samples. His offspring is his offspring's offspring because at this rate, you won't be able to marry anyone your age. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) He's going to be responsible for a whole generation of Dutch children not being able to date because they're like, there's a strong chance we're related. (laughs) Yeah, they'll be like, oh, Jim, I see you as a brother. No, literally, I've looked up our DNA. Uh, we are we are brother and sister. You know, he's trying to sibling zone all of uh, (laughs) the. All of Holland, you know. What a terrifying thing to do. And I, I just, that's not a healthy person, I don't think. I mean, psychologically speaking, I don't think that's a healthy person. I mean, seemingly speaking, must be very healthy. I mean, that <laughs> must be, that, that must be, uh, he must be hoarding it. Like, it just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know they've said they're going to um, fine him. If he does it again, imagine if it gets to the point where like, he just ignores all the fines. He's like, I don't care. You can't stop me. I'm Miley Cyrus. I can't be tamed. Yeah. And what if he ends up like going to prison? Can you imagine going to prison because you've jizzed too much? Like, I mean... <laughs> imagine that being the reason that you're sent. Well, what are you in here for? Well, I just couldn't stop donating to sperm clinics. <laughs> now all of uh, every Dutch person is related. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Just as soon as he hears the click of like a little medical jar, you know, yeah. for any kind of sample, bang, he's in there, gone. Putting the P into philanthropist. Well, I think any time I'm asked by a doctor to do, you know, like a wee sample or something, my entire body just goes, oh, we've forgotten how to do that. We on command, no, couldn't possibly. I'm quite impressed that he doesn't get like the stage fright and he's just like, yep, yeah, wham, bam, in the pot, no problem. I'd get, I'd get scared. He's probably not had the touch of a human in quite a while. I think he is attracted <laughs> to those sample pots. Yeah. Like, I think that's what it is. <laughs> and he wants, like, a, a socially acceptable way for him to, uh, you know, fuck a sample pot. And uh, I know you bleep it out way there. Uh, for him to make love to a sample pot. But that is that better as a thing <laughs> to, like, to make sweet love to sample pots and stuff? He must be. I mean, how good. as none of us have donated sperm no. but do we know no. do we know what the process is like like I want to know the ins and outs I want to see a vlogger talk <laughs> about donating jizz like they do about going to Disneyland you yeah. know, here's the queue uh, you know, and, uh... get ready with me to come yeah. and donate <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's an odd mixture of, of sort of uh, arrogance and uh, self doubt which says I would make a great father as long as I'm not involved but I'm yeah. wondering, he must think he has great attributes. Like Yes, but none of them are sticking around and looking after his children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know a few of those. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm sure he's made some families very happy. So, you know, mixed bag, as I call his yes. <laughs> testicles. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> now it's time for your IVF news. This is the one counterbalancing story, uh, which is the story that China is weighing up whether it ought to give single women IVF access um, to things like sperm banks. And we're not we're not talking to this Dutch man about it, uh, <laughs> lest he repopulate China. Um, but they're trying to slow their demographic decline in China and they're suggesting that they might allow single mothers to exist, um, which, you know, obviously they already do, but single mothers on purpose going to sperm banks and deciding to do it that way. They would be able to take a paid maternity leave and receive child subsidies that were previously available only to married couples. Um, Lauren, 
you have a dog, uh, <laughs> so you know what it's like to look after another creature. How do you feel about this? I think it is a really good... So I don't know, and this is my own ignorance, I didn't know that that wasn't already a thing. Like, I'd never considered... Like, maybe it is in other countries, I don't know, but I'd never considered that if you're a single like a single woman that that option might be off the cards for you in or at least in some places i think it's great i think it's a really good idea especially if they're having like a population decline anyway they're gonna need need the babies who gets shit done single women single women they will carry out that task no problem they'll get it done they'll get it done quickly efficiently i think i think it's a re and it's very empowering as well i think like I was gonna say, it it sort of sums up the whole. You don't need a man, but obviously you do because you need the. But you don't need him to be there. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As like, what's interesting about this is like um, that China have had the one child policy for so many years because of the massive increase in population, and now they are um, now now they are worried about you know looking after the people that are older. So I believe we're in the find out stage of the f around and find out yeah. uh, with uh, with population increases and decreases. For me, I, I, I was thinking, like as you said, Alice, like, uh, like there is one solution and that guy needs to emigrate from the Netherlands <laughs> to to China. Um, there's how many billion people are in China? Now? I think it's like over one billion. I think no. there's quite a lot of people there. Um so yeah, it's uh, it's good that they, you know, that uh, single women are able to get uh, IVF and maternity leave. If I'm being frank, they should have got paid maternity leave before that. Like you know, if you're, to, you're only entitled to it if you're married to get the paid maternity leave. So you're already like it. Just it, it it's nice that like China isn't punishing uh, single moms. Um, that was great. I, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I think it's a fantastic news. For everyone except the one man who's now been banned from donating sperm, basically. <laughs> well, 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 if it isn't the consequence of his actions. This is, this is why you can't have nice things. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's in about 18 years. A lot of people are going to be knocking on his door. There'll be a line around yes. the block of like... Oh, imagine his day, like, Father's Day for him. All the cards... <laughs> he could live in a house of the cards that he receives on Father's yeah. Day. And at Christmas, he gets so many pairs of socks and, like, uh, <laughs> you know, little golf accessories, even though he's not into golf, but his children don't know him well enough to know whether he's into golf or not, <laughs> which is, like, every family, even if you live with the dad. Like, I don't yeah. know how many hobbies my dad has, you know? I mean, he's going to get those mugs that say, technically, world's number one dad, because he's yeah. the first dad, but he's not their real dad. Their real dad's the one who showed up and actually raised them, you know? That's true. That's true. <laughs> the world's number one dad in numbers. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this week. Um, flipping through the ads at the back. Have you got anything to plug, Lauren? Um, I have a lot of live shows coming up, like gigs and things. So if you just follow me on Instagram is probably the best bet because Twitter is a ship that has sank firmly into the dick of icebergs, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> so on Instagram, which is just at Lauren Patterson. And I'm at Alison Spittle on Instagram. There's a link tree there uh, in the bio. And um, I'm playing the... I'm playing... Uh, the 10th of May in Soho Theatre I'm doing the show Wet you can come along and see that there are tickets still available and also uh, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival I'm doing a show called Soup uh, it's going to be on a monkey barrel at 125 in the Hive uh, every day so uh, bring some Vicks Vapor Rub and rub it <laughs> under your nose because I hear the place stinks uh, but it's going to be fun yeah <laughs> And uh, we have an enormous number of roving reporters this week. Uh, Frank Grimy Grimes, John Lucas, Kangler, Bonkra, Rod Funk, PK, Lauren Nirenberg, Robin Shantz and Michelle Brazier all sent in the Iceberg Dick story. Um, wow! Uh, C. Lips sent in the Michelangelo's David story. John Taylor, Kangler, Bonkra and Henning Strzok sent in the Jizz King story. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you would like to counterbalance this wave of 
dick based stories you can tweet us at hello gugglers with any stories you'd like us to cover here on this august publication also we have a gargle live happening in edinburgh on the august the 15th and the 22nd if you would like to come to watch the gargle happening in real life uh Go to thebuglepodcast.com slash live. Uh, we will have memorial batteries for you to eat. <laughs> I can tell you, when you said Jizz King, I was like, Jizz King, that's a that's a high street uh, eatery I'll never visit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's next door to the sperm donation bag? <laughs> I'm Alice Fraser. You can find me online at patreon.com slash Alice Fraser. It's a one-stop shop full of my stand-up specials, podcasts, and blogs, as well as my weekly writer's meetings. If you'd like to join a writer's meeting with me, at patreon.com slash Alice Fraser. And this is a Bugle Podcast and Alice Fraser production. Your editor is Ped Hunter. Your executive producer is Chris Skinner. I'll talk to you again next week. You can listen to other programs from The Bugle, including The Bugle, Catharsis, Tiny Revolutions, Top Stories and The Gargle, wherever you find your podcasts.